how do you compare the human and lizard genomes? Now, my man collaborator, Manfred Grebherr, was tackling this challenge in order to better understand how our genome encodes who we are. When I first started working with Manfred, he was using off-the-shelf visualizations like this dot plot. So what we're looking at here is one human chromosome compared against one chromosome from that of the lizard. And then each one of the dots inside this plot represents a region of sequence similarity between those two genomes. So the A, T, Cs, and Gs roughly look the same in these two uh, chromosomes. But for Manfred to look across his full data set, he had to look at many of these plots. And in fact, one of his data sets was producing over 300 of them. And when I asked him about these, he said that he found them really, really overwhelming and also unintuitive. And it turned out in hindsight that they were hiding some critical subtleties in his computational results. So we worked together for a while, and I designed a new tool for him called MISB. And here I'm showing you a view from just one part of that tool. And MISB is designed to support data like Manfred's, data that's complex, that's multidimensional, and was the first tool to fully support this type of comparative genomics data. And what we're looking at in the outer ring are all the chromosomes from that of the human genome, and on the inner ring, all the chromosomes from that of the lizard, along with one user-selected chromosome from that outer ring that is emanating a set of colored lines. And each one of those lines represents a region of sequence similarity between those two genomes. So using MISB, a scientist can quickly, through interaction, explore their full data set in order to build up mental models about the interesting patterns that are contained therein. This is actually a screenshot of the very first data set that Manfred loaded into MISB. Now, by some measures, this is a pretty picture. There's lots of colors, and there's circles, and it's amazing how much everyone loves circles. But for Manfred, what he saw was really ugly, messy data. He wasn't expecting there to be so many lines going to so many different places. And this actually went against what he knew to be biologically true. So he went back to his model, and he tweaked parameters for a while and was able to get to this point. So when he got here, he, complete, he decided to take a, a different approach and completely scrapped the model he was working on and designed a new one. And that model gave him this data set. So he then went on to publish his results and release his software to the scientific community. And I asked him afterwards how long it would have taken him to make this breakthrough using the tools he had available to him prior to MISB. And what he told me was, honestly, I don't think I would ever have gotten here. And what I like about this story is that not only does it illustrate how visualization can be effective in helping someone make sense of data, but it also shows visualization, what I think is at its finest, when it can disrupt and, and fundamentally change the way that we're thinking about our questions to begin with. <laughs>